Hi, it's Dr. Lee, and this is God Encounters Part 32. And I'm going to call this one Helium Balloon. Yes, Helium Balloon. And I'm going to use the um, Bible verses, uh, 1 Samuel 14, 6-7, and I'm reading out the NLT, New Living Translation. And that happened to be the Bible that I'm um, that I'm reading now um, and reading and studying now. And so I actually read this this morning, so I wanted to share this. But 1 Samuel 14, verse 6 through 7, let's go across to the outpost of those pagans. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, perhaps the Lord would help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle, whether he has many warriors or only a few. Do what you think is best, the armor bearer replied. I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. Again, 1 Samuel 14, 6-7, New Living Translation. That's the NLT. Let's go across to the outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Perhaps the Lord would help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. Do what you think is best. The armor bearer replied, I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. And I want to um to share this um with these two Bible verses because the perhaps the Lord would help us. Jonathan just I guess walking in faith, perhaps maybe the Lord would help us. And you know the thing about this story, they would um uh, his dad Saul had became king and they uh, the uh, Philistines you know I guess I would call them bullies and you know just you know I mean somebody's a bully and they the Israelites halfway you know scared of them and uh, Jonathan uh, when they went out to fight and his dad and some more men they were kind of got I guess got on nerve got scared and Jonathan him and his own brother they went um, a different path they kind of snuck away his dad didn't know he was gone and he I went and he felt like that you know that could take him, but like would that God would, um, would uh, that God maybe you know he said perhaps the Lord would help us. So his faith in God perhaps. Well, of course, long story short, um, he um, when he went up there, him and his armor they 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 got the um, the answer and just go and read it. I'm trying to cut it down so we just show, but they got the the um the uh the answer to make him go ahead and do attack and basically um God helped him and um Jonathan and his armor bearer they they killed like twenty men, I believe, top of my head. But what that was interesting about the story that the Israelites only had like two weapons. I wanna say two swords because the Phil Philistines wouldn't let them um, have any blacksmiths or do anything so they would they couldn't make any kind of swords or sharpen you know any objects without them knowing about it so um this just was so touching to me because he was like you know perhaps you know he wasn't even sure and so many times in our life we're not even sure about something but it was like you know we're just gonna trust god with it and so um and then his own bearer just like do what you think is best i mean to have that kind of support in your your life and just like do what you think is best and I'm completely with you, whatever you decide. And so it's like, oh, I was like, I love that because here he goes and he, he's he got this trust in God and God put this one person in his life and that he could have been a naysayer, but he said, do whatever you think is best. So with that, the whole maybe and the, um, perhaps, well, perhaps that he said in the, um, in the NLT, but perhaps the Lord will help us. And so many times we don't do things because of fear. And just like I mentioned in another video, how I was like afraid to come on YouTube and like share any of these um, dreams. I was, matter of fact, I was afraid to share any kind of dream, vision, anything I have with anybody, to be honest. And I mean, I don't care how many, um, you know, that came true and came to pass, but I've grown now because now I see perhaps God's going to be with me, you know? And so with that, and God just, um, and when I walk in obedience, it's like God just shows up. And sometimes, you know, you don't have all the picture. You just have a little bit of it, like a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. And God shows up and he does the rest. And so um, the devil used fear. So don't let the devil use um, fear. And like I said, if you have something that's fearful in your life, read um, uh, 1 Samuel uh, 14. Read the whole thing so he can explain to you about 
Jonathan and how could you imagine all these soldiers and warriors they have? You only got two swords out the whole military. I mean, that would make anybody scared. But when you trust in God, you may have a giant that's so big. Trust in God and just believe and God can work it out. But anyhow, on to the um, story. This happened just like, um, just happened. I wanted to share this because I it like caught me off guard. Um, we were um, we were at home and my daughter had went to the dentist and the dentist gave her a balloon. And um, the balloon had helium in it. So in our house, we have like maybe about, I guess about 10 steps go this way and then maybe three or four that go that way. You know how your steps go and they turn like this, like that. Anyhow, um, my daughter was standing very top and I was upstairs too. And I was running from like two bathrooms, you know, cause I got the other kids with me and I'm going back and forth trying to bathe everybody and make sure, you know, I'm running back and forth to both bathrooms. And my oldest daughter had already um, evidently got out of the bathtub and she was standing there and um, I'm walking back and forth and right by the stairs, she's standing at the very top of the stairs and she said, mama, look, she said, there goes my balloon. And when she said that, I'm gonna use this other phone. Let me use this pen. Like this is the balloon here and this is the string. This is the balloon. The balloon was just like going up, 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 up to the ceiling. Where in our house, um, we got those high ceilings. You know, like, like some of the house got those high ceilings and you can't even figure out how you're gonna change the light bulb because the ceilings are, are high. I'm like, why did they make it that high there? But, um, so in the hallway, it's got one like, it's a high, a really high um, high ceiling where you just can't stand on anything and to get it. Even if you stand on the stairs, you can't reach it. So the balloon was like just going up. And so I'm running back and forth like a chicken with a hair cut off. And my daughter stops me and say, Mama, look at my balloon. She said, we're not going to be able to get my balloon. So she knew even at five that the balloon got so high, it was going to be a problem for us to get it down, right? And so... Um, and we don't even have a ladder like that's that that that's tall to even get up there. And the way it's made, it's almost like difficult to get that high anyhow. But it, um anyhow, so the balloon was going up and she's sitting upstairs. So I stop because she's at the top of the stairs and I want to see what she's going to do. So I looked at her and I said, Okay, I see it. I said, but don't worry. I said, We'll get the balloon. You know, having no idea how we're gonna get the balloon. Um, I, I guess the only thing I can think we'd get a stick and try to beat it and knock it, you know, get a broom, hit something, you know, throw socks at it or something. I don't know. I really wasn't thinking a whole lot about it, but I said it with just like confirmation, like we'll get the balloon. And when I said we'll get the balloon, she just stood there staring at the balloon. So when she stood there, I stood there too, because I said, I hope she don't try to, you know, lean over or jump, because, you know, that's going to make her tumble down the stairs, off the ledge or whatever. So the balloon was going, and I'm going to put the balloon here, like this is the balloon. And the balloon was going up, up, and you know, and I stood there and just watched. I mean, all this happened in less than maybe a minute, 30 seconds. The balloon was getting higher and higher. And when I told her that we'll get it, don't, you know, don't worry about it, we'll get the balloon. Not even sure, kind of like Jonathan was in there, like Jonathan said, um, perhaps, maybe, you know, maybe God would help us. <laughs> so walking in the, uh, in the faith that I have learned to walk in, um, walk in, I just we'll get it. I just know we'll get it. They know how. And so the balloon was going up higher. And when I said that, my daughter just stopped, and I stopped and just stared at her in the balloon because I wanted to see why she's still standing there. You know, I didn't want to leave her. And like I said, I'm running back and forth to both bathrooms to check on the other um, kids. And I got better things to do than worry about this balloon that's about to be stuck up in the ceiling. So and I stopped and looked at her, and I'm staring, looking at her. The balloon did the oddest thing. Why it was going up at like this? The balloon started to go down, this heaving balloon. And it started to go down and gravitate towards my daughter. And it went all the way down and it went straight over to her. Like, I'm looking at the balloon. So it went straight to her. So like this here, it says, so it came down a notch and it just like was dripping down to her. And it went all the way to her. And it says, this is my daughter here. It did this, it said, it's like a hand grabbed the balloon string and brought it down to my daughter and brought it all the way across to the stair. And when they got there, she just opened her hand and they put it right in her hand. And when it did, she looked and she started screaming, Mama, Mama, God is in that balloon. God is in that balloon. And I'm sitting there like, just like in awe, because I, 
cannot believe what had just happened. This balloon go from here and gravitate all the way across up high and down to my daughter standing over here, come across the stairs and went directly into her hand. And all she had to do was open it, open it and close. And what was so interesting about it is that she, she even knew that that was out at five. She knew that that was not typical for a balloon to do that. And she was so, she could not, but she said, God is in that balloon. God's a balloon in that balloon. And I was like, well, listen, we got to go tell your daddy. We got to go tell your daddy. And so, um, no, so she ran out of the tell her, um, her, uh, her dad. And it was so cute. And she was like, daddy, daddy, you won't believe this what happened. My balloon was going way up to the ceiling, going to get stuck in the ceiling. And when it went up there, she said, God used his angels to bring me my balloon. And my husband was like, praise God. But it was so, I mean, it was like amazing. And for her to even, to, to, to notice that, that a balloon with helium should not have went down like this. I mean, it's no fan or anything in the hallway, nothing to, to blow with. Um, I don't recall the air and thing to be on. And even the air, there's no vent there. So, I mean, it's just, and most of the time when they get in the bathtub, I turn like the air up so it won't come on. Because it's like cold when you're bathing and, you know, you got the AC on. But it was just so interesting to see that balloon way up high and she's down here lower you know and it's going way up high and then it just it started just like dropping down and it's like just a hand grabbed the string and an invisible hand and put it right in her hand she didn't lean she didn't strip she didn't jump she didn't have tippy toe it came directly to her on the very top of stairs and i was like all you could do is just give God praise. Like, God, just thank you. I mean, just thank you for just showing up and manifesting life. I mean, even for a little girl balloon, a fire balloon, you know, just but walking in faith, I told her I for sure that we'll get the balloon. I had no idea that God was going to step in and intervene like that. And so, same way, like with Jonathan, Jonathan uh, um, at war, you know, in war, and God just stepped in and intervened and um, not you having but two swords, you know. Sometimes you don't know how you're going to do some things in life. You don't know how it's going to work out, but you walk in faith and say that you are going to do it. So if you need to go back to school, if you need another job, if you're in pain, you need a healing, whatever you need, whatever you got going on, your children, grandchildren, niece, nephew, sister, brother, people showing not acting stupid, acting crazy, whatever they're doing, all you need is for God is to intervene. So you walk in faith. You get your prayers together, you walk in obedience, and just trust in God in all things. No matter how incy, wincy, tall, a tiny, bitsy, itsy, bitsy, or whatever it is, no matter how large, from a balloon, a helium balloon, that, believe me, I, you know, had been a thing to think about at that time, but it was such, you know, something so small and insignificant to me. But it was important to my daughter, uh, um, to my daughter, so tiny. That God stepped in to intervene. And then from Jonathan, their lives are in, in, stay in danger. You know, not his life, but the whole Israelites. You know, the, Philist the Philistines are just coming, just, you know, just murderous, just killing up, chopping up, you know, you know, and just, you know, bullies, you know. And But God intervened. He intervened, and Jonathan wasn't even sure how God was going to do it. But when he went up there, He's, um, he said, no, if they tell him to come up, you know, what he'll do if they tell him to stay, what he'll do, you know. And he went by there and he trusted God. And when, when they did what he said, he acted like he said they would act. And God stepped in and intervened. So whatever it is in your life, whatever giant that you're facing, whatever it is, do your part and God will do his. So when I say that, your part is to walk in faith. But you must walk in obedience. Faith. And obedience. Some people just tell you all you got to do is just believe. But I see in my own life things just manifesting so much more once I started walking in obedience. And no, I'm not perfect. But I know one thing. I'm not like I was. I mean, just a couple of months ago, a year ago. I mean, especially years ago, you know. So with that, don't let people tell you nobody's perfect. You can't do everything that's in the Bible. Just tell them, hush up. You do you. And you do you, you know, and so you trust in God and um, do your best and God will help you do the rest. Well, I'm Dr. Lee and I'm God Encounters 32 and I just had to share um, this and like I said, the helium, a helium balloon. And thank you for watching and read um, Samuel, 1 Samuel, what's it? 1 Samuel 14, it's very, very touching. 
that story, if you're going through something, it give you the, the it give you the motivation, the encouragement that you need. Because you see what they went through, and God intervened, and God helped them. And oh, what's also what's so awesome about the story, why um, um Jonathan up there, Jonathan and his armor bearers up there, um, fighting to kill the twenty uh, men. God sent an earthquake, and he sent an earthquake. It put the Philistine, even though they was more bigger, had weapons and stuff, put them in confusion. When he, um, they, and they just went into confusion when they saw people getting killed, and the earthquake came, and they, um, they went to stabbing each other, each other. And then the Israelites, that was um, some of the Hebrews that was on the Philistine side, uh, on the on the Philistines' uh, side, that I don't know if they were made to be on there or why they were on the, in their army or whatever. They started, you know fighting the, um, the Philistines. So the, their own men start turning against them and, and they were stabbing each other and just killing each other. And um, by the time Jonathan and Daddy um, saw, they, they began to tap. But it's just a great story to see how God is stepping and just to intervene. No matter how, like, just how serious the problem is or how serious the issue is, walk in faith and obedience. Trust God in all things, small or humongous. And all things, rich or poor, black or white, green or purple, whatever, you know, whatever your circumstance is, you know, half, you know, half alive, fully alive, whatever. Trust in God. Don't give up. And as always, I'm Dr. Lee. And let go, let God, and keep it moving. Thank you for watching.